Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we're going to show you how I painted the Grenadier from North Star Miniature Games. This is for Games of Silver Bayonet and I used Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. I used primarily army paints, deep blue, mummy robes, matte black, oak brown, leather brown, dragon red, gun metal, filthy cape, Skeleton bone, tanned flesh, greedy gold, uniform gray, bright gold, wolf's gray, pure red. And then I used the Citadel's Sterling Mud. I used some Reichland Flesh Shade and some Nolan Oil. So, let's go ahead and get started painting this guy up. To start off, I primed this model Rustoleum Gray Primer, their fillable sandable. Very cheap and widely available. But I'm going to start with some Army Painter Deep Blue, and I'm just going to take my brush and slop it on there real quick. I'm just going to start blocking in the colors. Nice deep blue. Since he's a gray and a deer, it's going to be a lot of blues and reds primarily. Funny that the French uniform, red, white, and blue. Think about that. Now that the blue is dry, you're going to use some Army Painter Mummy Robes. This is what we're going to use for our white. So we're going to do the pants. Also have his cross dikes here. Let's start with the rear ones. Let's also go around to the front. And now there's a little groove on this strap here, showing that it's two different straps. When we wash it, that'll pop out. Now we're going to take some Army Painter Matte Black. And we're going to do the boots. And we're going to do his grenadier hat right here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do this ammo case. Get the rest of this boot and gaiters.
Now I'm going to use some Army Painter Oak Brown. And there's two things I want to make sure to get. He has a hatchet right here. I'm going to do the haft of the hatchet. And the other thing I'm going to do is the rifle. Next I'll use some Army Painter Leather Brown. And I'm going to get the bag here. Up next will be Army Painter Dragon Red. And we're going to cover the epaulets and the fringe. We also have the cravat. We're going to use some Army Painter Gunmetal. And this is for the metally parts of his weapons. So I'm going to do the uh, head of the axe blade here. And then I've got the trigger firing mechanism. Then have the barrel, and there's these bands that run around the barrel. Paint those gun metal. Oops. Now we're going to use Army Painter Filthy Cape. And this is to represent his gray hair and his mustache. And the sides here. Now that I've got the gray hair done, I'm going to go back to the dragon red. And you see he's got a little braid right there. So 
so I'll make that little uh, hair tie back his scrunchy make his scrunchy dragon red next we're going to use army painter skeleton bone and that is for his pipe he's a gentleman there smoking a pipe Now it's time to texture the base. For that we're going to use some sterling mud. Get my little applicator tool out. While we wait for that sterling mud to dry, now will be a good time to apply some Nolan oil as a wash. Some people oppose washes, but they, in my opinion, are talent in a bottle. Now you have to be careful not when you start doing around the shoes the boots and everything. Don't do it so that the brush touches the sterling mud. Since the sterling mud is still wet, it'll cling to the brush and smear across the rest of the model if you keep moving it up that way. So just a warning, watch out for that. I've had that happen before. Now sometimes you can make for a great look. You might like it. But watch out for it. Now we're going to do some of the skin. We're going to use Army Painter Tanned Flesh. Now here we want to be careful and not touch the other areas we did. So we've got his hands. Once you start doing the skin, especially after the wash, that's when it all starts coming together. Now the fun part will be the face, because we want to work around all the whiskers that touch the pipe or the uniform. Now I'm going to use some greedy gold. We're going to do this plate right there. I'll show he's a uh, old guard right there. Now we're going to put another wash. This time I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to do this Differently. So where before I baked, used a big messy brush, I'm going to use my little brush here. I'm just going to touch the skin parts. So I don't want to slop it all around like I did before. You get that pipe. This will really help the color. And if we also keep it neat under the colors it's supposed to, we can keep working with the rest of the model. And let's get some of that gold there. Now I'm 
take some uniform gray and I'm going to take my dry brush here just a little bit I'm going to take it and rub most of it off and it's going to be light taps here and this just bring a little bit of uh, color to the raised edges there so it stands out so then I went back and I just put gunmetal on the little uh, tassels there. And let's get the boots. Just enough to light them up and I'll get that. Now I'm going back to mummy robes here. I'm going to use my brush here and we're just going to run some of the edges of uh, cross dikes and various straps. Ah. Swing a little bit over. Don't scrub that off. And this allows that when the straps are running next to each other, you can control how good they look. And maybe just a little bit on the ammo case here. Now I'm going to use both deep blue and wolf gray. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a big thick run of wolf gray of uh, deep blue on here. And while that's wet, I'm going to clean out my brush and take just a little bit of wolf gray in the brush and using the side of the brush right there, wiping off. Just tint it up. And since I didn't clean out the brush, there's some deep blue in there, so it kind of blends it up. And I can go back and forth between the deep blue and the wolf's gray. The advantage here is as the deep blue is still wet, the wolf's gray will blend in with just a little hint. And you can go back over the wolf gray with the deep blue, and that will mix in some more there. So it allows you a way to kind of control the color blending there. And we're only doing this on parts of the uh, trench coat where the light is coming down. So we'll put on some We'll spray like that and spread it around so it smooths out. Moving back and forth to the between the two colors. Carefully get this upper collar here. That way it stands out from the rest. Well, that's good enough. Now we're going to take some pure red and I'm just going to run some little highlights here to get the tassels and the epaulets. I just want to get this, this little cravat here. 
Next we'll take some bright gold. And the job here is just to uh, put a couple spots on this eagle. It stands out a little bit more. Now we're going to go back to gunmetal. I'm just going to do the same thing, little touches here. depth to it and we'll just run it down like the barrel. Tap tap tap. Tap tap tap. Alright, good. Now I'm gonna go back to the tanned flesh. And all I'm gonna do just uh, like eyebrows, nose, chin, just little touches there cheekbones, and then wiping off most of the paint, I'm just going to run a little bit over the brown so it pops a little bit, because the tan flesh really complements the brown well. And now we're going to call it a gay day on our Grenadier. Looks pretty good. Oh, I went back with some bright gold and touched up the exploding bomb. But excellent model. And thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. We'll see you next time.